13 misconceptions about the failed Turkish coup attempt of 15th of July 2016. Since the failed Turkish coup attempt of July 15, 2016, the world media has been quite incompetent in covering the happenings in the country, to a point that almost amounts to disinformation. This was not limited to the mainstream media, but also included so-called alternative channels. This video has been prepared to lay down some basic facts about the incident that is very well known by the Turkish public, but for one reason or another, it has not been conveyed to the world in a manner that would faithfully portray the happenings that befell the country. Misconception 1. The coup was staged by the Turkish President Erdogan. The first few hours of the coup attempt marked a period when information was rather limited. And in fact, some people did entertain this conspiracy theory for a while. However, as more information became available in the following days, the probability of this idea completely evaporated. Apparently no one in Turkey, including the harshest opponents of Erdogan, have made any mentions of the matter ever since. The large number of generals involved, whose life, honor, and prestige is completely destroyed as a result of participating in the coup, alone should be evidence enough of the false nature of this theory. Misconception 2. Since purge lists were ready, the coup must have been staged. It is a well-known fact that the government has been purging Gulenists since 2013. Many people think that the loyalty of the police during the coup attempt could have been achieved only due to the recent purges in that organization. Plus, just one week prior to the coup attempt, some newspaper headlines reported that a great military purge was on its way. Purges had begun long before the coup, and they seemed to be the reason rather than the result of the ill-fated attempt. That the coup has been staged is not a possibility, but knowing that it would happen in advance, the government may have turned a blind eye to it, let it happen in order to make the purges easier, as well as to identify previously unknown cells in the military. Many military officers, and Erdogan himself, have revealed that the coup attempt benefited them, but this is just one of the many alternative theories, and unfortunately, we still do not know what happened exactly on the day of July 15th. Misconception 3. The coup attempt was just another one of the many coups that had taken place in Turkey since 1960. Turkey has had three successful coups since 1960, along with a couple of memorandums by the military. This final coup attempt, however, stands out in that it involved a group outside the military, which was the Fatullah Gulen religious group. All the previous coups were carried out by military officers who had no connections outside the military, even though they may have had support from various other groups such as foreign governments. So actually, this was a coup attempt using the military, not by the military. This coup was also unique in the amount of bloodshed and fire deliberately aimed at the general public. As a matter of fact, this is something almost unprecedented in Turkish history. Misconception 4. The coup was poorly planned. It didn't stand a chance anyway. According to the official story, the coup was supposed to take place in the middle of the night at 3 a.m., when it stood a much higher chance of success. But information was leaked in the same afternoon by a major among the junta to the secret intelligence service who passed it along to the chief of staff in the army. The chief of staff, in turn, forbid all activities among the troops in order to prevent the coup. Understanding that they were exposed, the junta rescheduled the coup to an earlier time, which disrupted their plans and made the coup attempt look awkward. They did not have a chance to postpone, because the government had already made it known that it was going to purge the Gulenists and the military in the coming weeks. We do not know the real plan, so we cannot say if it will be a viable one or not. But even if it were viable, there were many reasons that could still lead to its failure. Foremost of all was the unusual resistance encountered at all levels, beginning from the military itself, who refused to participate, the civilians who took to the streets all the way to media, communication channels, who refused to shut down. In the previous coups in Turkey, the military had not met any resistance. Many experts claim, however, that had the kidnapped chief of staff signed the declaration put before him by the rebels, the whole army would have participated by chain of command, and that alone could have changed the fate of the attempt. Misconception 5. The rebels had many opportunities to kill Erwan, but they didn't do so. Only in one of the previous coups, the leader of the country was killed, and this happened only after months-long trials. 
assassinating the president directly would heavily damage the legitimacy of the military regime, something they would badly need in the following days. Despite all this, there are testimonies showing that the special units attacking the hotel, where Arrow One stayed, were ordered to kill him if they could not catch him alive. They arrived there 15 minutes short of his escape, but nevertheless fought the guard and the police killing two of them. The president later got on his jet to Istanbul, and the pilot tried to disguise it as a scheduled flight. This information was somehow leaked, and the plane was hassled by two F-16 fighter jets. We do not know if these jets knew that the president was on board or not, but even if they did, they lack air-to-air -air missiles to shoot it down. Misconception 6 The coup was carried out by secularist military officers. The exact composition of the junta officers is unknown. However, all evidence, like statements from other military officers, including the sources not sympathetic to Erwan government, attest to the fact that the large bulk of the operation, and the top organizing committee itself, were made up of Islamic Golanists. Only a negligible small minority is thought to be secularist Kamalists. This is quite normal as the Kamalists had already sided with the government after the political split between the government and the Golan movement in 2013. Misconception 7. Secularists and the Opposition Supported the Coup In the first few hours of the coup attempt, the two primary opposition parties made statements denouncing the coup attempt and supporting the government. The opposition parties still continue to support the government with a previously unseen act of solidarity in Turkish politics. Moreover, on the evening of the coup, people from all levels of society poured to the streets to protest and confront the attempt. Misconception 8. The Gulen movement is an apolitical Islamic movement. To this moment, it is unknown whether it was the Gulen movement as an organization that carried out the coup, or just that many followers were active without the decision of the organization itself. While the movement's exact role in the coup attempt is debatable, it has always been considered as a religious group inside power politics, even though indirectly. There are many reasons for this. First of all, the movement is not open, and its secret organizational structure still cannot be disclosed. Since its foundation in the early 70s, the movement has concentrated its efforts on establishing itself in the ruling layers of the society, and they use the method for staffing critical government offices to attain their goals. Educational institutions that are still the backbone of the movement were critical because of that. This also explains why it has little public support despite a very strong presence in the economy and government. From the mid-80s to this day, there are infinite number of newspaper articles reporting the Gullen movement's purposeful infiltration of government offices. According to allegations, stealing entrance exam questions was a method frequently used. The secularist coup of 1997 outlawed Gullen for this reason, and thus he has been living in the USA ever since. Sinkala Tasugun, the chief of national intelligence of Turkey from 1998 to 2005, is said to have referred to Gulen movement as part of the Islamic Greenbelt Project of the United States. Most of the executors of the Ergenekon and similar trials of 2008, trials which are now considered a plot against the Turkish military establishment and allowed further infiltration of military posts by Gulenist officers, were linked with the Gulen movement. Our time here is limited to go further into details of all the allegations made against the Gullah movement. Misconception 9. The perpetrators did not target mass media communications. The rebels were late to seize TV stations other than the TRT, the government broadcast network where the coup statement was read. However, in an unsuccessful attempt, they did bomb and try to seize the Turksat satellite station that controls almost all the communication networks in the country. Misconception 10. The Erdogan one government purges the secularist opposition by using the coup attempt as a pretext. There are incidences and reports claiming that people with no apparent relation to the Gulen movement are suspended from work, but so far the number of known such incidences has been limited, and the purge seems exclusive to Gulenists. Misconception 11. The coup was done to restore democracy, which Erdogan had destroyed anyway. Despite its many flaws, Turkey is still a democracy, and a strong one at that. In November 2015, elections were carried out successfully amidst many terrorist attacks, tense political atmosphere, and turmoil in the southeastern provinces. In the last year, going to shake this nation that is already finding itself extremely vulnerable in the face of multiple threats from different organizations. The rumors that free speech is restricted, journalists jailed, and newspapers shut down are among some of the many allegations made against the Erdogan government.
While this is true, most of the aforementioned journalists and newspapers were linked to the Gullen movement or other terrorist organizations, and the recent coup attempt justifies these procedures on them in the eyes of many. As already stated, the Gullen movement is not the only reason why the government behaves in a way that is labeled as undemocratic. From the summer of 2015 on, Turkey has also had to face the attacks of separatist PKK guerrillas in the southeast region that assumed full-scale warlike proportions. This was coupled with terrorist attacks of both ISIS and PKK in large cities. Despite all of those, the government did not declare state of emergency or limit freedom of speech. This is to such an extent that even today, publications which are known to be indirectly linked to terrorist organizations such as the PKK freely circulate. Putting all those aside, people's defense of democracy on the 15th of July by sacrificing themselves in front of tanks and bullets, alone by itself, attests to the strength of the Turkish democracy to the unbiased eye. Misconception 12 The failed coup will lead to Erdogan's dictatorship. Turkey is not only a multicultural and multi-ethnic country with a deep history and tradition as the heir to one of the greatest empires of the world, but the country also has a very diversified and complex free market economy, ranking 17th in the world in terms of GDP. It would be technically quite difficult, if not impossible, to rule Turkey with a South American-style dictatorship or any other one, probably much more so than in case of many typical European countries. Misconception 13. The purpose of the coup was to wind back Islamization of Turkey and bring back secularism. That Turkey was legally Islamicized by Erdogan is a common misconception. While Islamization may be one of Erdogan's agendas, Turkey is still a strictly secular republic, as stated by the Article 2 of the Constitution drafted in the year 1980. All laws made by the Parliament have to comply with the Constitution, which is overseen by the Constitutional Court. During the last 14 years of the AKP government, not a single law that would openly violate secularism has been passed by the parliament. However, the Erdogan one government did make many changes that would not be a direct breaching of the second article, but may look as Islamization. Things such as lifting the ban on the headscarf in public institutions, or the ban on secondary schools with semi-Islamic curriculum would fall into this category. If the coup were successful, however, it is likely that a mild form of Islamic rule would have been established in the country. This is so because from the 1970s on, when the Golanists first started infiltrating it, the military was chosen as a target because of its secularist institutional form. This video has been prepared using the public information available to everyone in Turkey. Why the same information is not being used by the international media is unknown.